Um, okay, so thank you for joining us on this. Um, this uh, first of its kind, extremely weird and extraordinarily hard to describe program that we have been putting together. Um, yeah, thank you for working through my videos, my emails and all the weird stuff. So what we're going to be doing today is, is instead of talking about the program and you know, what it might do for each, each person, because that's going to be so different for each person. We wanted to give people some, something of an experience of how this might work and what kind of results, you know, how do you get these results that are, you know, as yet unknown? Because basically, so what do you bring to the program? That's, that's what the promise of the program is. You know, we want you to be able to be empowered, to step into living the life that you really love, the life that maybe you feel that, you know, you should be living, that you're destined or born to live. So um, I'm going to drop out in a second, but the, I'll just introduce what, we, what we've got planned for this session, which is for Sharon, who is the, still the U USA's only person who's licensed to qualify other people in clean language. It's a snappy title. Um, yeah, an absolute master of it. Um, we want to do a live symbolic modeling session, which is extremely painless and not at all threatening in any way. Um, and we've wrote Eric into be the guinea pig for the first session. I don't know if you were aware of that, Eric. And if you're not happy with that, please let us know. Yeah, you're cool. He looks cool. I think he's cool. He's from Boston. <laughs> People in Boston never get upset. Uh. Um, it's a very laid back, easy going place. <laughs> so, uh, without further ado, yeah, um, Steve, George, or Rob, I mean, we can invite more attendees. If you guys want to jump in, I can send you um, invites to become panelists, but I have to, Eric, how did this work? You, you had to log out and then click the link to come back in as a panelist? Yes, if I was already in, which I was, um, then I had to log out, go over and click the link and come in. But I do know, because uh, another group I'm with, they use this software all the time, you can just make them a panelist on the fly and it logs them out and logs them back in if the software does it all. I know that for a fact. Well, it's not letting me do that. <laughs> Maybe you don't have the uh, level of ownership that allows it. I don't know. I should do. I'm fully paid up pro user, the webinar license, and maybe it's just my mouse doesn't work. I don't know. That's all right. But hey, it's just technology. So, we'll manage. Um, so Sharon, does, it, does that, does that make sense, what I've said? Do I need to give any more description? Okay, um, I, I will. No. I'll, I'll do a little bit more. Just do a little bit more. <laughs> the, the idea of this, why is it called modeling? Modeling in the way that we, that we use it um, please get everyone mute, by the way, because I'm getting some background noise as well. Um, Eric Jones, make sure you mute if you're not. Yeah, that's it. Cool. Because we can't see you, but I think we may be getting some of your sound. Okay. Modeling. Modeling is the process of building a model, which is a, a way of understanding how something works. That's, that's, that's how I, that's what it means to me anyway. Symbolic modeling means that you are building a, a model to understand how you work, okay? How you think, process, whatever, whatever it may be. So you're, 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 you're modeling yourself and what you want, uh, oh, sorry, would like to have happen, and, um, and you're doing it using symbols, okay? Symbols are words, ideas, metaphors, Anything, are you, look, the idea is not to, that we need to conjure up anything. It's we talk in the way that we talk, and the language that we use that's meaningful to us is Sharon's material that she works with, okay? And nothing else, yeah? Sharon is not gonna interpret, I don't think. She's not gonna interject anything or add anything to the process. Um, so that's symbolic modeling, as I understand it in a nutshell. And with that, I'm going to mute myself and I'm going to let you guys
take over. You can take as much time as you want. We've got nearly an hour left. Um, you just, just want to run with it. And, you know, if you're at any point you want to stop, you want to ask a question, you want to explain what's going on, then feel free to do that. Um, thank you. And I will step out right now. Okay. So, um, so what's different about this program, just to address what's kind of the same and what's different about this program compared to other programs, um, is that um, we're not promising one certain thing. So instead of like some programs say, oh, you know, we'll make you a better conversationalist, we'll um, help you be less anxious, um, we're, we're using a framework of um, some of the current thinking and some exercises to help you do a little bit of internal work on your own or with other people who are in the program with you. Um, but all of the real meat of the material is coming from from you and your desired outcomes. So um, one person may want to work on their relationships with their children. Another person may want to do business, you know, how can they improve their business? And, um, and that's where the symbolic modeling comes in and why this part of the program is so important is that um, I'm going to be doing private sessions with um, everyone who, who comes on the program to begin to help you refine and define what your desired outcome is and also to help you check the ecology of it. So as the program goes through the days, you might find that what you originally wanted changes a little bit, and that's okay. So it's not about being um, stringent with your goals. It's, it's about creating a dynamic reference point and figuring out the best and most ecological way for you to get to that reference point um, that makes sense in you and for you and your life. So, um, so Eric Conover, if you would like to unmute, uh, let's just do a little session and then um, uh, so I'm going to be working with you uh, for a little while maybe 10 minutes or so and um, then we'll open up the chat uh, to any questions or noticings but um, I'd also like to hear from you what it's like to be facilitated in the way that we're going to be doing in just a minute and um, so I'm going to kind of frame this. Normally, when I'm working with you on the program, I'm going to really frame it super broad. It's going to be basically, what would you like to have happen full stop? And that means your entire life. And, and you can begin to think about that before Monday. But with you, Eric, yeah. what I'd like to do <laughs> is, is um, I'd like, just like to um, frame it. Let's just frame it in... Um, uh, uh, in regards to this particular program uh, so you know by participating in this particular program what would you like to have happen well uh, in 10 minutes um, <laughs> or a little longer would be a good so, start uh, <laughs> that's it. Uh, a great deal of wealth no um, I, <laughs> okay. I don't actually care a lot about wealth uh, mm -hmm. so at least not historically however it's becoming a problem um, I should probably give you some background. Uh, I was a magician for a lot of years, a professional magician on mm -hmm. stages in the uh, Lake George area of upstate New York. And um, I had a family at that time, and uh, everything went haywire, sideways, mm -hmm. really. Uh, my ex-wife she suddenly divorced me i guess she didn't like the lifestyle of a magician uh, she was a beautiful assistant for a while and the kids lived in the park for a summer uh, mm -hmm. but uh it, it it did all go sideways and then shortly thereafter my life went topsy-turvy i felt that i couldn't uh continue in uh in magic as, especially with the constraints of child support so i had to mm -hmm. get serious Mm. And I don't like serious. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't really fit a performer. Um, so I, I got serious. I, I started selling insurance door to door. That's that's very serious. Uh, mm -hmm. I found I could sell, but um, I wasn't super happy with it and, and gave it up after a couple of years. At, at one point, everything was going haywire with the uh, separation slash uh, custody of the kids and. Um, she was evil, still is probably. Anyway, uh, I moved to Boston to get some distance and that turned out to be a good strategy because I wasn't under constant uh, pressure by her and uh, her dragging me into court, et cetera, mm -hmm. all the time and making things up. Uh, so 
while here, I, uh, I pursued <coughs> several things, but I didn't pursue magic. Um, as of late, in the, in the last uh, six years, I would say, I pursued Uh, it seems Eric's hung for me. Is that the same for you? Mm. Um, hang on. Got to love the technology, haven't you? Mm. Hope there you are. Okay, great. We've got you back. Okay. Um, so, so you were you were saying that you moved to Boston, and that was a good strategy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and uh, in later years, I, I pursued web design. I've been doing web design, video. I publish books for people, uh, anything involving uh, the mechanics of publishing using my computer. Okay. Uh, but as of, well, this morning, I consider that I'm, I'm starting to get back toward magic. I did a barbecue mm -hmm. show, uh, first show since uh, this year, um, uh, just just last Saturday, and uh, out oh, okay. of that I got another show, and I, I learned that there's another show coming out of that for the Knights of Columbus, and uh, it's starting to snowball, which is the way it always worked in the past. Um, right. Didn't really have to do any anything active to uh, make it happen. I, I just like to be wanted, and I like to be paid for making people <laughs> happy. Uh, and I can show up and do a show anytime. I consider it a, a, a moral imperative. I do birthday party shows because I consider a birthday party show really important in a child's life. Okay. So, okay. Uh, it, I was shifting around, and um, it, if I had to say what I wanted to be when I grew up, it would be a magician. But okay. uh, or again, and I, I've just been kind of betwixt and between for a lot of years now. Yeah, yeah. And and so when all of that. And you were a magician for many years, and then you had to get serious, and you don't like serious. <laughs> and you had your first job on Saturday, and it's starting to snowball. And that's your experience of how it's happened in the past. Um, what would you like to have happen now? I think I'd like it to roll uh, toward the magic. I, you know, you can't do back-to-back wall-to-wall gigs i've never experienced that not even in my busiest magic mm -hmm. days and I, mm -hmm. that shows well except when you're doing a theme park when you're doing a theme park it's five shows a day seven days a week may to september no days off um that sounds serious yeah well it is serious but you better have fun <laughs> because it gets serious <laughs> i was having so much fun at it the second year of that schedule i actually went out and got myself a dinner theater too hour and a half illusion show with assistance and uh, did that and I was never better and that was the moment that she dropped the big D mm. the force so okay. she couldn't have me being successful anyway, that's her okay. uh, and and you'd like to roll and and you can't do back-to-back -back shows hmm. well yeah so I'll continue with the web design and the publishing okay so continue with web design and the publishing and um, doing magic again yeah, and you'd like it to roll. And what kind of role is that role when your magic begins to roll? It's interesting. It's uh, it's a high speed particle flow. Lots of things are mm. happening at, at once. I'm in action, not in sitting mode, which uh, is the part I hate about web design. I'm mm -hmm. my my butt's glued to a chair. Mm -hmm. uh, uh oh. Okay. I just I got to let said my internet connection's unstable. That's all right. Okay. Uh, but being in action all the time, I like that. I mean, mm -hmm. I really do like that. And I, I like it not to be all virtual action, if you know what I mean. Yeah. I, I also like the adoration, uh, which occurs when I'm in my magic character. I show up at a gig. I mean, I'm royalty. I mean, yeah. I've forgotten about that. I just, I, that was so much a part of my life. I, I, I forgot that I'm. Mm. You know, treated like a very unusual human being, which I guess I appear to be. Yeah, yeah. So, like high speed particle flow, and you like being in action, and I do. and you forgot that when you show up, you're royalty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And yeah. and you like that, and you like being in action, and um, 
And when it rolls like that, like a high-speed particle flow and magic. I'm turning it off. Hmm. Oh, my goodness. Call from way much more. <laughs> I know exactly who this is. Is someone calling to give me money? Call from way much more. Yeah, that's fine. It's okay. continuing. I'm not taking it. <laughs> All right. And, and when it's like high-speed particle flow and you like being in action, right? Mm -hmm. And more magic. Hi, Eric. Um, then what happens? A message coming in. I, I'm not listening. Okay. It's an okay. email I wrote yesterday. Take, take your time. Yeah. I don't know how to make it quiet. That's, that's, the, minute, that's the minute message versus the 20-second message. <laughs> yeah, well, I do like the action. I mean, hey, phone rings. Two phones. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and what would you like to have happen with your magician and, and your, where you're like a high-speed particle flow? and in action and the web design when you're right there well i, I want to in, increase the number of shows i mean if i could make my living off of it i would probably drop web design simply because okay it's 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 a means to an end but it's not my end it's not my passion yeah yeah okay and and it sounds like you did a show Saturday, and then you got a show from that, well, and did. you're getting another show from that. Indeed. <laughs> and, and increase the number of shows. And how many shows is that shows when you need to increase the number of shows to make a living from this? Well, uh, it's a good question. If I could do six birthday party shows on a weekend, I'm making a living. Okay. Um, that stacks up. Uh, of course, I'd, I'd work during the week or whatever, but it that coincides nicely with, you know, my other activities. And uh, I, I've often thought that if I could get that going on the weekends, mm -hmm. or, or a couple bigger shows, you know, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. then I'm happy as a clam doing what I like doing, and then I can provide for others because I, I have this generosity. But when the well is dry, I can't give it away. Mm. Yeah. And if you were to be able to do six shows a weekend, you'd be able to make a living and still do some work during the week yeah. if you wanted. Yeah. I'm and happy as a clam. Yeah. Indeed. And anything else about that happy when you're happy as a clam? I, yeah, I feel like I'm God's favorite, you know, like yeah. uh, the universe or, or God, however you want to put it, is showering blessings on me. And um, that's the way it used to be. Mm. That's, the, yeah. that's the way it used it's been. Yeah. I'm sorry. That kind of happened. It's been so long. Yeah. What just it's happened? Been like that all the time. I, I just, ah, I've been blocking it. Mm. I had a lot of loss. A lot of loss. Yeah. Uh, something I didn't talk about. I, I, I was sort of a, a wake and bake pothead for a lot of years. And uh, in 89, I gave it all up because I saw my, my family being in danger. And it was 95 when I lost my family. So mm. I, I, and I never went back, but um, yeah, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of loss, a lot of loss. Mm. And I've, I've sallied forth and I've done what I felt I had to do. Mm. But, um, You'd like to be happy as a clam. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I, I eat them too. But, uh, <laughs> it's funny. I last summer did not one but two different clam shops as as a web developer. <laughs> Super, yeah, and and it's been a lot of loss. Yeah. Yeah, and it has, and I, I don't. I try not to. Fo you try not to focus on it, but mm -hmm. if you're not doing what you feel you're cut out to do, then uh, you're not not really fulfilling a life purpose, are you? Yeah, yeah, and. And you'd like to be happy as a clam, and, and you were holding something back there, and it touched you. We could yeah, see yeah. that. Those yeah. Are, these are tears. Yeah. I don't know if the resolution cares. Yeah, yeah, we could see that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and more magic, and doing what you're meant to do. Yeah. In, indeed. Uh, it's, a life that has purpose, 
but yeah. maybe not serious. <laughs> Life is a should be if you're doing it right a joyous experience, eh? Uh, you know, kids. I I, re I resonate with kids. Nowadays, people probably think I'm a pedophile or something. It's not even the true, of course. Uh, that was something my wife hit me with back in the court. Anyway, uh, having to do with my daughter, phony sexual abuse is, is not a laughing matter. Um, yeah, there there were some real bad times. Moved to Boston, it worked. Uh, I digress. Kids know me. Kids know me. There's something about a, a, a child that's unsullied by this um, world we have here. They just look at me and they're like, wow, a big person who's like knows the score. They, they always know me. They, I, I, a, I, a baby will not take their eyes off me. Mm. Yeah. And, and when we're magic and it begins to roll, right, like high-speed particle flow and more shows and even making a living with your magic, what's the first thing that needs to happen just right now to begin to have that magic roll just the way you'd like it to? Well, the glib answer is I need to decide and just do it, but I find the real answer is I have to take a risk again at being happy as a clam because mm. um, I have to take that risk because, uh, you know, I lost a lot when I was happy as a clam and it was all working. Um, I don't want to go into that pain again, so I'm holding myself back because I'm avoiding the pain. And I need mm. to stop holding myself back from possible pain. Yeah, yeah. And when you've been holding yourself back because of the pain and there's risk involved, because the last time you were happy as a clam, what would you like to have happen right now? Well, I, I, it would be great to have a sign that it will all work. That, you know, if I commit myself to just going for it again in a new unit of time, um, that things are going to work. That's, uh, that's what I would love to happen right now. I don't know if that's what you're looking for. Okay. You know what, Eric? I just dropped. Could you repeat that? I apologize. Uh, that's fine. You, you did freeze there for a second. Um, yeah. Well, if I were to know now that it would all work if I just committed to it 127% uh, and went full steam ahead, if, if I were to somehow get knowing this, that it's going to work because mm -hmm. it all, it's almost like it has to come out from, side you, uh, from outside you, it's like it needs to be an omen or, you know, this... this someone comes to the door and says, hey, by the way, you just won the lottery, or, you know, uh, I don't need the money, but, you know, just a sign. I would like to, <laughs> would like to know that it will work. It worked mm -hmm. once upon a time. Yeah. 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 And when you'd like to know that it'll work, what kind of no is that no? Uh, it's conviction. It's just, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, you know the back of your hand you you just no it's mm -hmm. one of those facts you just yeah it's not controvertible it's incontestable yeah. that conviction like the back of your hand yeah. and whereabouts is that conviction when you have conviction like that hmm. well i can't it's it's a relaxed conviction and mm. I, I feel it in my belly and i i lower belly and uh when I talk about things, I, I get calm and my voice drops. And, uh, mm. you know, I've experienced that many times. Mm. This. And, and when that calm conviction is in your belly, in your lower belly, does that calm conviction have a shape or size when it's right there? I get what you're driving at. I, I can't put my finger on it. Um, when it came to magic, it came through a, 
Because <laughs> that's a funny story. Anyway. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, and, and it's in your lower belly. Yeah. And, and take all the time you need to get to know more about that conviction where you feel calm and relaxed that's right there in your lower belly. And thou, how that conviction can begin to help you move towards more magic and purpose. Hmm. And would this be a good place to stop for right now? Well, I'm, I'm fine, yeah, that, that is a good place to stop. And I, I can make it my mission to know that conviction again. Hmm. Yeah. On a more regular basis. And I'll take yeah. the time to stop and breathe. Because when you know it, it's like the back of your hand. You know it. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay. Thank you, Eric. Thank, Thank you, you so Eric. much for it's being nice. willing to, to do it's this. Very, it's very interesting. <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm, I'm wondering if you'd be, um, well, I guess, I guess first let me ask if there's anybody on the line that has any questions or comments. Um, if you go ahead and I've got to like go into the uh, chat, if there's anybody that has any questions or comments about what was happening and then we'll talk to Eric about what his experience was with that. So I'm going to give you all a minute to pipe up in text <laughs> and, and Ben and, and our Eric Jonas, if you'd like to, if you have anything, um, that's welcome as well. Well, I'm just wondering, you know, how much we need to explain about the way that you just did what you just did, what you you and Eric did. Um, but I, you know, I think it is definitely one of our objectives that we have talked about in this team to um, to get people to start to use skills and. and Sharon, it's also possible, is it not, for, for you to use some of these techniques on your own? Yeah, what, what happens is when you've been asked these questions, you begin to model out for yourself using the same questions. Um, and in my experience um, as, a, as a client as well as a facilitator is, um, well, let's, let me just talk about it as a client. When I first came across this, and things began to happen and I began to find places in and around my body for, um, for things like congruency, integrity, and they began to take form, um, I could draw on them later. And I also began to ask myself the question, what would I like to have happen right now? When I was a little like waffly or overwhelmed or confused or I wasn't sure what to do, I just stop and ask myself, okay, what would I like to have happen right now? And you see the difference between that and what um, uh, it helps us begin to pull away from the external dynamics and drives of other people and begin to look at what we want to have happen, but in the ecology and the context of our greater life. So it's, it's not just about hedonism and what do I want and what am I going to do to get whatever I want. It's about what would I like to have happen right now in my life with, with all the constraints that we all have. You know, we, we all have families and, and friends and jobs or businesses, you know, so there's a lot happening. There's, we all have the need for income. And um, so, so part of what uh, we hope to have happen in this program is that um, by being modeled um, the way that Eric and I were working, you can see not all of you on the call want to be magicians. So what Eric wants and how he needs to go about doing it in the context of his own life is really specific to Eric. Um, and we can't, we can't just take that, what he's doing, and put it over onto you in your life. And um, so over the time that we're going to be spending together, we're going to kind of be re-looking at that, that dynamic reference point. Um, and what has to happen. But let, let's talk to Eric for a minute about what his experience was of that session and um, how he imagines that information being useful. Um, would, you be, would you be game to speak about that, Eric? Sure. How, how was that for you being, being facilitated in that way? It was great. Yeah. Um, we don't have the experience of being heard very much in this mm. world. Uh, yeah. It, we 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 aren't heard. We aren't duplicated. We aren't acknowledged. 
and we go through lives alone. And, uh, you know, just talking about the subject, which is always like right on the tip of my mind, yeah. I, I found in you uh, a person who listened and uh, was able to echo back, you know. Mm -hmm. it, it wasn't subtle, but it's not supposed to be, I suppose. Um, it, no. I, I got that I am being heard, which just makes my wants and desires, oh, I don't know, relevant. Yeah. In this world, they're, yeah, everyone wants something. Everyone wants to rule the world. Everyone wants a million. Yeah. Things. Everyone wants, and they want it on a silver platter. You know, I, I want it now. Um, but y you tend to, I tend to uh, just treat treat what I need and want as sort of a second class citizen. I, I don't really think about that and go for it. And uh, getting just the echo of one other human being in the world hearing what I'm saying and, and giving it back to me makes me feel like, uh, wait, maybe maybe that's a thing. Maybe that's something I can tune into. Maybe that's something I can dare to hope for. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, thank thank you. you. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Eric. So, um, anybody else have anything that they'd like to comment on or ask about the program or about what we were doing or how that might work towards what you want to have happen specifically? Sharon, I was just wondering, well, you know, mm -hmm. if anyone comes up with a question, um, I, I I wonder if you wouldn't mind um, saying a little bit about how you've used these techniques yourself. And I'm thinking particularly um, the blog post that, that you wrote uh, regarding your interactions with Taylor. Yeah. And how these exact same questions could be applied to, I mean, it's public blog post, so I, I, I yeah, yeah. there's something yeah. that's okay to talk about. The exact same questions can apply you know, to something that isn't magician related. Yeah. So, so looking at a more pragmatic example, really pragmatic example, um, I brought my daughter home from college in early 2014 because she was um, smoking heroin. And um, I'm not a real, I'm not a real fond follower of 12 step programs and this idea that we're powerless. Um, and she was, she was willing, she was desiring to stop using enough to go through like the drug and alcohol program locally. And, um, and that didn't work. She was the only volunteer attendee and um, everybody else there was court mandated and they decided to kick her out because she wasn't talking very much. But I can tell you, my daughter getting up at 6.30 in the morning to get to a seven o'clock meeting, that's a big deal. That itself shows the initiative to do what she wanted to do. So then we were home, and it was kind of like, what, what happens next? And, and I've used, uh, I ask her three questions. You know, what would she like to have happen? Um, sometimes it has the what would you like to have happen next, or what would you like to have happen right now? Same question, but, but kind of time constrained. Um, and, and what's the next thing that needs to happen? What needs to happen for this? And is there anything else? And those three questions, I tell you, I don't know if I could have lived through all of this without being able to sit, really, really listen to what was happening with her and help her iterate and cycle up and out of what was happening with her. So I wasn't modeling her symbolically the same way that I worked with Eric. Um, um, but I was using these questions in a really pragmatic way when this serious thing is happening. And here are the constraints you don't get to use when you're living at home, right? And she already decided that living on the street wasn't an option for her. So when you don't get to use when you're at home and living on the street isn't an option for you, what would you like to have happen right now? And, and she, has, she was the one who started the drug and alcohol. Um, she also was the one who took herself down to a methadone program and got herself in, self involved in the methadone program. And when you don't get to live at home for free, <laughs> you know, what needs to happen? And she's the one who's been working two part-time jobs, um, really keeping herself busy, working hard. Um, and I, 
I have, I have gotten to step back because without this methodology and without those questions and knowing that those questions can lead somebody to really beneficial thinking, um, I would have been all over that girl. And I don't know that my wants and my desires and my fears would have pushed her and taken her to the right place. You see, because mommy fear is like big. And I could have completely overwhelmed that child. And she may have complied, but that's not the same as finding those, those bits inside her that help her move to that next, that next step, that next level of responsibility. And Sharon, I'm, 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 yeah. what I'm hearing in this, and you know, this is, this is we're, we're in unclean territory, by the way, right now. Yeah. We're we clean -ish. Free to interpret. Okay. What, what, what I'm getting from what you're saying is that the objective of you know, how you were able to relate to your daughter was not about what you wanted to have happen anyway. Like, oh, so no, because I wanted her to quit, go back to school, you know. Dominated, you know, take a bath every day, you know. Yeah. But but it's actually, you know, it, it it's like it started and finished with what did she, what does she, what would she like to do to have? What is the life she, that she chooses for herself? Yeah. And to to me, that's very much. This is why it was so important, I think, for me to 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 get Sharon involved in this program because. I mean, I mean, I've been working with Sharon now for 18 months but, you know, because I, I am convinced that the tools that we need, the resources that we need mm. are already there, right? I, yeah. Eric, I believe that you, or you possess the resources or most of the resources, yeah? I mean, if there's external resources, one might be to go out and ask somebody, you know, yeah. can, you, can you do this for me, right? Um, but you, you have the capability to ask. So it's like everything we, we have, we have what we, we have already been given what we need to mm -hmm. enjoy the exact life that, that, that we would like. Um, so, that's how the symbolic modeling works is because literally Sharon used very, very, very few words, probably a vocabulary of about 20 words that you didn't say, Eric. Mm -hmm. Everything that she was working with came from you. You know, the so it's, it's, it's about, it's about where, you know, it's like, uh, what is it? You know, the, uh, the whole manifesting, right? Like who is it? Rhonda Bryan and the secret, right? You know, think it and it will happen. Um, but the skill of pointing our attention towards what's really important to us and what we want to have happen. That's, that's a skill that's, that's learned. Um, and, and what, what this kind of questioning does is helps get very, very intimate, very specific, um, and very what, what we say idiosyncratic to the person who's being asked the questions. So it's not a one-size-fit-all. And it's not just a dreamy mind where, oh, you know, put this big dream up on your wall and put affirmations that you don't believe and suddenly it will happen, right? Yeah, I'm with you, Eric, right? Um, this is really... This is really practical, logical, pragmatic stuff, even when you're modeling symbolically, um, because, because like the person being modeled knows, um, knows what their words mean and they have a sense of it in their, in their person. And that's what begins to begin live, being lived out. Yeah. And, and I think, um, I think that's so really important as well, because yeah. like, you know, if Eric uses words like God's favorite, I, th I think was, the phrase you used, right? Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to interpret that. Eric Jones is going to interpret that. Sharon's going to interpret that three different ways. And they're all not going to be what you mean. What those words mean to you is what those words mean to you. Yeah. Right? That's a symbol. God's favorite is a symbol. The particle acceleration thing. That's a symbol, right? Yeah. But they're your symbols, completely your symbols. So, so you know, that, for us to yeah. tr work with those or to try and inter or help you to analyze it or anything like that, is it's bound to go off piste very quickly. Yeah. And it may be helpful. It may feel nice. You know, it may feel good for us. You know, to, we've managed to, you know, kick you along the road a bit. But, you know, you know, I think what this um, clean language stuff has been around only for about 30 years. 
But in those 30 years, it just seems to be getting results again and again and again. Yeah, about 1985, uh, 1990 was... Um, and, and so this is just part of what we're offering in the program. This is, this is kind of like the, the starter, you know, kind of getting everybody's, like, you know, desired outcomes built, reframed. And, and the, the lovely thing with Ben and Eric Jones and I is that um, we have three really, really different styles. And so you have the possibility of working with all of us and, and pretty much choosing the person who has the style and the kind of information that makes the most sense to you. So I'll be doing the symbolic modeling sessions. Ben has framed out some um, just really good things, you know, really practical things to look at, some exercises to get a little history, a little future thinking. And, um, and then we've got Eric Jonas, is, who's all, also going to be doing um, breakout sessions. And he has a really – Eric is a, a – an attorney by trade. So he's got a really sharp, logical mind, but he's got the heart of a philosopher. Um, so there's, there's just this lovely stretch of, of um, you know, rather than kind of getting that one size fit all, it, it really is designed to be, um, you know, providing you what you want at the time you want it. And um, as a participant, you're welcome to attend any of the breakout sessions that we have. Um, and take a taste of all three of us. And, and we're also here to help you get what you want in, um, in a more pragmatic way, like Ben was saying, you know, if you need something external, um, if one of us can help provide something for you that's, uh, that meets an external need of yours, um, we'll do our best by either pointing you to a referral, somebody that we know that does something really well or has a product or, um, uh, something that you might be able to use or just working with you individually as we need to through this time together um, to really like get the, I love that, the high speed particle flow. I'm going to use that, Eric. Okay. <laughs> Forgive me, but thank you. Yeah, that, was, that was lovely. Just thinking this would be a good time for um, Eric Jones to, to jump in. Our man in the Philippines. So we, we practically cover the whole globe between the three of us, We're like a triangle around the globe. So Eric, why don't you, yeah, jump in. Let's, let's hear from you. I'll just say hi. Um, like you said, I'm Eric Jones. And so, and sure, that was really an interesting way of describing me. He is like both logical and the heart of a philosopher. I appreciate that. Um, what makes this program so dynamic is that we are all attuned to the fact that the power and the secret is really within you. In my law practice, my, I named my firm Empower Law because it was all about empowering my clients, serving humanity through law. And Eric is like, when you talk about being happy as a clam and when you talk about being listened to, it's like, what I can guarantee anybody who's listening to this tape is like this recording is that we are all about listening and helping you be you. Not, not us, not inflecting our dreams on you, not inflecting our wants. I may use this logical attorney's mind sometimes and this incredible heart that loves people. That heart that loves wants to listen to you, wants to feel you. And so I'm not clean like Sharon yet. It's like I do really believe in the power of clean language, and I intend on getting some training in that because I think it's, it's so in tune with what I'm about. But what I'm also about is what you were saying, Eric. You need, we all need someone to hear us, to listen to us, to affirm us, but not to affirm us with BS, but to really hear us so that we can hear ourselves because when we can begin to speak from our hearts, from our souls, and feel safe and comfortable. And, oh, you, you're not laughing at me, and you don't think this is a joke. It's like, or you don't think this is so far-fetched, or this business idea is just so absolutely insane because no one's ever done it before. When you don't get that kind of reaction, but you get someone who's actually hearing you, who's trained, who's educated, who's smart, just like you, then all of a sudden – you can reach deeper inside you and let what's inside you come out. And so I don't have a lot to say. I think I pretty much is all I really want to say this particular moment. Um, this program is 
individualistic. Each person is going to have a different experience, and we're going to go wherever you take us. And so, Eric, thanks for really sharing. I really loved hearing what you had to say. You have so many metaphors that I just want to put my arms around and just say, all right. And, and I feel you. I feel your pain. I feel your joy. I feel your fear of being happy again. I hear, I feel, I see you, okay? And you're not alone, bro. You're not alone. And, and we're I mean, going to be here for you. If, if, I, if I can jump in, Eric Jones, I mean, I, I, I bet you were hearing some echoes from your own story when, when Eric was, was talking, right? I mean, you, you, know, and, you know, you're here. You're, you, you are able, and this is, you know, this is the man, by the way, who, who inspired this whole course, right? From you know, from you know, your story that you've you've also been in that situation of you know, so you. I mean, do do you mind taking five just to you know, just to sketch out, you know, your well, so far I'm and sure. where this this amazing energy and desire to serve comes from. I've always been since I was a kid. I've always been about serving, always. I mean, that's just who I am. In, I mean, it's just who I am, you know, whether it be me winning the, the multi, what was it, muscular dystrophy dance-a-thon, whether it be canned food drives, it's like for those who are in need. Um, I mean, there's a, there's a list that goes on and on and on. But what Ben is getting at as far as the echoes is that many of us is like have been through just the roller coaster of life as like the ups and the downs. Um, and we have been thrown for a loop, whether it be being accused of having people falsely accuse you of things, losing your family, losing your job, losing your hopes, struggling with your weight, all of these different things, all these different challenges in life. And so what Ben is, um, where I think Ben is going with this is, Eric, there are a lot of things that you have shared that I have experienced in my own personal life to some level. And so, which of course gives me an empathetic heart, um, which helps me listen, no matter how extreme the accusation, no matter how extreme whatever, because of just my own life experience and my experience as an attorney as well, it empowers me to really understand that no matter what you hear, no matter what someone's gone through, there's a reason why, and there, none of us are in a position to judge. It's like some things that are said about people are true. Some things are said about tr people, there might be partial truth, and some of it may just be all BS. It's like there's normally a spectrum somewhere in between, but where we as human beings tend to live in a place of judgment. We quick to judge. We quick to label. And so what I, come, what I bring to the table is like along is like with Ben and Sharon, is we've learned a long time ago is like labels don't mean anything don't be quick to label anything it's like what label someone put on you is what they put on you that was their stuff not your stuff and to just really take a person as they are we all have our good we all have our bad we all have our ugly okay all of us every single human being on this planet we all have our skeletons in our closets we all have our insecurities we all have our strengths but very few people truly accept people where they are. And you're coming into an environment where we just accept you for who you are. We want to see you succeed. We know that you can succeed. We know that all the secrets are in you. And they're not really so much secrets. Some things, Eric, you know. There are things you, I mean, when you were to, I, I just saw the lights coming out. You know, there are things that you know, and I know that you know. And so, but it's not my place. It's not my place to put anything onto you. But what I'm saying is, I know that you can feel some things, and with just a little bit more modeling, it's like more of you listening to yourself, it's like, and then us giving you some other tools, is like to help you, and some structure, and some kick in the butt if you need a little bit of kick in the butt, some accountability, etc. In time, you will be as happy as a clam, is like, and you will be, is like that particle just pew, 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 is like, making the impossible possible and wowing people's minds. It's like, and there's so much more. And then as far as the self-esteem and feeling like royalty and, and the purity of that pureness of children is like who, is like they don't judge you. They just see you. They don't care if you're a big man. They don't care if you've got some extra rolls on your belly. They don't care. They just see you and accept you for who you are. 
And so, and that will give you a chance to be able to feel complete and feel like you're just, not just feel, but be. The whole thing is about being, being what you're called to be. So anyway, I've said enough, and we'll talk more later. <laughs> Thanks, man. I really appreciate that. Sharon, do you want to do some wrapping up? Yeah, so we've got about eight minutes, and, um, and I just wanted to speak to what happened there um, between Eric and Eric, because this is, this is something that happens in groups, especially when we begin to really work on our desired outcomes from an internal space. We, we begin to model um, and uh, make associations with the other people in the group, and that helps us. It's a bit like being able to, um, even, if they, even if the desired outcomes are, are really divergent, right? You know, um, one person wants to, you know, open their first small business. The other person wants a better relationship with their children. There are aspects of our humanity that come out and metaphors that, that uh, let's say, just resonate with us, right? Um, and although we interpret it in our own way, what's lovely is we can begin to take some of those things that are meaningful and, um, and begin to even add them and test them in our own environment. And so what's nice about this not happening in a vacuum, but happening in a group of people, is, um, is we all get to begin to draw strengths from other people. Uh, you know, like the conviction. It's like, okay, so, um, you know, I'm, I'm now have this seed in my mind okay so um when i have conviction right that's like what and where is my conviction and how do i know it so now i have this lovely seed from eric's work that i can take and begin to work in myself because um hearing that um it was like okay yeah that you know that is so apparent and, um, and it's like, he's right, he's right. So, so this is the other lovely thing of working in a group is we can begin to share one another's exercises. We can um, share the symbolic modeling sessions as people want. If you'll be working privately with me during the sessions and if you want to share them with the group, you can. And if you don't want to, you don't have to. Um, and we do try to be very careful about utilizing people's metaphors. Um, I know Eric, you've been a great sport. <laughs> really appreciate it because it's given us some 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 a uh, little a uh, cleanish but less than clean kind of breadth to really um, expand on what's happening and to to utilize the, the work you did and I really do appreciate that um, your generosity in that um, but if you want to just keep your work private to yourself that's fine too because it will still work um, and you also have a place to share it where you know that people are going to be respectful and they'll have all gone through the, some of the same experience. Um, so they'll have an appreciation of the tenderness and the meaning that this kind of work can bring to a person. Um, and, and we all, we all can see that. And, and I know Ben and, and you, Eric Jones, you, you've also had sessions and you know how, how intimate sometimes this work can be. And, uh, and that's what we want. We want you to take that, you know, be able to take that that intimate meaning and bring it out into the world in a way that that you want it to happen. Um, anything to add, Ben, before we begin to finish up for the day? No, I think um, I, th I think we've said just about everything that that we need to say. Um, I, I'm just I just feel really excited. It's, it's mm. intimate is the right word, um, but I I would struggle I think to Be, being able to witness that the, the session that you, you two you two guys did, and, and that was only twenty minutes, by the way. And, you know, you could be doing forty five minute sessions with people where you you know you go round and round more times. Um, the number of things that that it, you're right, the number of things that, that that came from Eric that he you know drew out of himself that for me just you know resonate like that. It's it's it is astonishing. And I think Eric Jones is, you know, I, I completely get what he's saying. It's, it's something about the commonality of our human experience. And, um, and that's why this, you know, can't be a book. I mean, look, if, if it all takes off and it works, maybe there'll be some kind of introduction guide book, right? Um, but it, this is experiential. It's, this, isn't, this isn't about knowledge. There's, there's no amount of learning 
that can deliver what we are trying to deliver, right? It has to come from practice. And it has to come from putting one foot in front of the other, like Forrest Gump. You know, it is that, that's all it is. It's like, this is where I am. And I'm here, you know, for very, very good reasons, right? Like I said in my email today that I sent out, I don't know if everyone read it, it was painfully long, um, that, that there are two kinds of things that affect us in our lives, the two kinds of things that have brought us here. One is stuff that we have, have control over and one is stuff that we don't. The stuff that we don't have control over, you can forget about because you can control it anyway. And the stuff that you have control over, you have chosen. Whether you've chosen actively or passively, consciously or unconsciously, all these things that we have been able to control in our lives, we have, in effect, chosen. We, are, we all have exactly the right amount of money in the bank. We all are exactly the right shape and weight that we should be because we have chosen to do what we have done, right? Unless you have been robbed, right? Which is something you don't have control over. So don't worry about it, kind of thing. I don't know where I was going with that thought. <laughs> <laughs> Sharon, you're on mute, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. But you have to experience it. You, you know, yeah. the, the, there is no other way. You bring it. The, does, the outcome and the result is within you. Yeah. And all we are doing is saying, come on, guys, let's join together and take a bunch of steps together. 28 days, right? And by the way, one of those days is completely about the judgment about good and evil, right and wrong, good and bad. Okay. Just Eric's mentioned. So, um, so I guess my last question that I'd like to ask you guys, is there anything else that you'd like to have happen on this call before we, before we wrap up for the morning? Um, Cause we are trying to be timely. I, I know that everybody's busy and we've all got, got the things that we need to be doing. Um, but is there anything else that you'd like to have happen on this call? Oh, well, one, one other thing, um, Eric can I need to, I need to ask you, um, whether you would be happy for me to publish a recording of this entire call to my list or part of the call to my list. Please, it's yours. Uh, uh, you've done a great deal of service to me for a long time, watching you work with your uh, career and, and morph. And your, I, your courage is amazing. You, you actually, you hang it right out there, Ben. So yes, gift to you. You've given me gifts. Thank you. Well, really thank you, Eric. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay. You, Eric Jones, go back to sleep. Mr. Middle of the Nighter. He's up at like 3 a.m. in the morning. 3 a.m. <laughs> uh, massive respect. Crazy. Thanks. Thanks everybody. Four different time thank zones, you. four different voices. Couldn't be better. Yeah. Super. But thanks again. Bye-bye. Thank you. Take Bye. care, Eric. <laughs> Bye, everyone else. Bye.